of the adulterous woman, and I had more to say about this, more helpful things. So uh, I hope you'll follow along in John chapter 8, verse 7 to 12. And those of you that like to be ready, I'll be going to Matthew 16 later on in the message. Matthew 16. I, I'm struggling a little. There was a very slight motorcycle accident out front here last night, and I had to be the rescuer. And uh, it was a lady, and the motorcycle had fallen on her. Uh, she pulled up to the stop sign, and she, she, uh, had, when she stopped, she couldn't keep it from going back, or, and she ended up going. So uh, I haven't lifted that much weight that quickly in a very long time. So when I got out of bed this morning, I got out of bed in my head. My body didn't go, okay? So uh, this morning, if you see me limping or struggling, that's why, and I appreciate the Lord giving me the opportunity to help in that way, but Lord, don't do it again. <laughs> that was hard. Last week, we spoke on the adulterous woman who was caught and thrown at the feet of Jesus, and uh, they wanted... They wanted to throw stones at her. Jesus said, he that is without sin, let him throw the first stone. And we, uh, we want to follow up on that. If you'll read with me in John chapter 8, verse 7. So when they, the, those standing around the side trying to catch Jesus in the act of, of breaking the law, and when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said to them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. I want to say this. You got to have a conscience to be convicted by. That's a good sign. I think we are in a time in history in which many people are without conscience or their conscience is seared, numb. But they had a conscience. Verse 9, And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, being, beginning at the eldest, the oldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the middle. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman. That's a good thing, too, by the way. It's a sweet thing in your devotional life for you to picture Jesus and you alone in your prayer closet, alone on your knees somewhere. He said unto her, Where are those thine accusers? Has no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, and I have this up on the board, Neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. What a sweet place to be. In the grace of God where he doesn't condemn us for our sin. Here's a Universal rule for Christians, don't expose it if you can fix it. Do you get that? Don't expose the sin of someone to embarrass them, to belittle them, to make them look bad in front of others. Don't expose it if you can fix it. I think even again of Joseph and Mary, the Christmas story. He wanted to, wanted to put her, her away privately. He wanted to divorce her privately and not cause a scene. Don't expose it when you can fix it. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. 
So we have three more life principles I want to bring up to you. First, the godliest are the most merciful. That, that says a lot about who you really are. Sometimes we lie to ourselves. Oh, I'm fine with God. I'm a, I'm a fine Christian. I come to church. I put in the offering. But the godliest of us, the godliest are the most merciful. The second life principle, mercy triumphs against judgment. To give mercy is better than to condemn and judge. That's a hard lesson for us to learn, but it's all through the scriptures. Mercy triumphs against judgment. And then three, third life principle, the victory of the, victory of the godliest is love and mercy, not judgment, not condemnation, life principles. So our responsibility and our mission in life as Christians on the earth are fourfold. Fourfold. One, heal. Heal, not wound. Wherever we can, we don't inflict pain and suffering, we heal and not, and not wound. Number two was comfort. Give comfort, not punishment. Three, soothe, not stone. I want to go back to the, 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 the second one, comfort, not punishment. I was 16 years old, had my very first wreck, one of several in life. And I had just rolled my 55 Chevy Bel Air down the road four or five times, ending up in someone's yard next to their picture window. I could see in their, in their picture window and see the TV on. I was so worried about my father. And when I got home, he was at a, a FOP meeting, Fraternal Order of Police. And he, uh, when he came in late, I was up waiting, and my dad, my father, walked down the hallway, and I said, Dad, can I speak to you a moment? He came in, sat down next to the bed, and I remember he put his arm around me. That didn't happen very often. He was just in a good mood. He'd just been elected president of the FOP. And uh, he, uh, I said, Dad, I wrecked the car tonight. And I kind of flinched, waiting. He gave me mercy. He gave me, uh, he gave me what I want to say, comfort. And it's a memory that I have that he didn't respond like I thought he would. He responded, responded with kindness, took off work the next week to go, go to court with me to pay my fine. It stood up for me. He's a good boy, Judge. He just had bad tires. And that was the truth. But I remember that parents, grandparents, make memories. Be merciful. Number three was soothe, not stone. And number four, again, was be merciful, not judgmental. In John 8, 12 again, in John 8, 12 again, then spoke Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. And there are so many people who they're living life, but they're living it in a, in a fog. They're living it in the dark. The fog and the dark. Matthew 16, 24 says it this way. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, denying himself pleasures, that might even be legal. Denying himself comforts, that might even be legal. But denying himself, take up the cross in each of us, have a cross to carry, a cross to bear, 
It might be health. It might be job. It might be family. But take up your cross, he says, and follow me. Following me means to follow him and his teachings all your life. Don't take a break. Not today, not Friday night of all things. Not, not, no. You take up your cross, the art of self-denial, and you follow him all your life. Verse 25 goes on with that. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. I had plans. Many of you had plans. And when I found Jesus, my plans, uh, I, lost my, I lost my life, the old life. And I got a whole brand new life because I so believed, as Brother Tim's song was, thank you, Tim, I, I so believe that uh, I have to be part of, of being of help, of service to others. I so believe that I changed my life entirely, but he gave me a better life. He can do that. Verse 26, Matthew 16, 26, For what does a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul. On that judgment day, nothing can be exchanged for a person's salvation. It can't be bought. It can't be bought. And then verse 27, Matthew 16, 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father and with his angels. Amen? And then he shall reward every man according to his works. What did he say? He that follows me. He that follows me. They that follow Christ shall have the light of life in their, in their life. That knowledge and enjoyment of God which will be to them the light of spiritual life in this world and in the other world everlasting life where there will be no more death, pain, or sorrow, no darkness, follow Christ and his teachings. And we shall undoubtedly be happy in both worlds. Follow Christ, and we shall follow him all the way to heaven. Again, in John 8, 12, He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. But if we don't follow his light, then we walk in darkness. That last part. Then we walk in darkness. It was back in the 80s. It was back in the 80s and I was deep in the woods. Must have been December, bitter cold. This particular night was very foggy but I had my flashlight. And I started to walk out, and I hesitate to dramatize this because my wife is here, but it was bad. I walked out, I walked out. We had bright eyes, those of you that know what they are, but the fog was so bad, the dark was so bad, and my batteries went out. Now, I'm way back in Wapsie. People were still there from years ago. And, I, and it was back before the cell phones. I know there was a time before cell phones. You guys don't realize that, you younger ones. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, oh, no, oh my, my batteries went out. Just so you know, now I carry three flashlights and six batteries. <laughs> that's half, my, half the weight of my pack. So that's not gonna happen again. But I started going out, and here was a creek I had to cross. And I had remembered idle talk back in the cabin. Anytime you get lost, find a creek and follow it to the power line. That's exactly what I did. With no light, nothing to guide me, 
I put my hand into the creek and found out what direction it was going, and I walked out to the power line. But in true darkness, with my hands out like this, I was going sideways, walking sideways. And about 10 o'clock at night, I got to the power line where I heard about 20 people yelling my name. What did it just say? If we don't follow his light, then we will walk in darkness. Wow. I think of just last year being back in the woods. I was supposed to meet Pastor Rodney at the, cro- at the intersection of these two paths, and he wasn't there. Pitch black, and he wasn't there. And he wasn't there. And I'm standing there and I'm waiting for Pastor Rodney and I started to pray. And all of a sudden, the woods exploded with light. Everything just shone. It was brighter than daylight. Riley, I got ready. I got ready. I thought I was going to heaven that night. But of course, Pastor Rodney was simply showing me up with the spotlight he carries on his forehead. (laughs) He didn't want to get lost in the woods in the dark. So, wow. But if we don't follow his light, then we walk in darkness. And if, if you are not following the light of his word, you're living life in darkness. That kind of reminds me, Bonnie, I do want to buy that spotlight, forehead spotlight. (laughs) Wow. What? Oh, can I buy yours? (laughs) Yeah, that's for coming out of the woods, not going in. Here are four of the false lights we often follow. One, and I want the I want the youth especially to pay attention. One, bad friends. Bad friends. Our friends, our friends going through high school ages, junior and senior high, they are the ones that we follow. They become our guides. They they share their experiences. Be careful. Bad friends. Proverbs 13, 20. He that walks with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools will be destroyed. Listen to me, youth that are listening here. You're getting ready to go back to school or college or something. Please listen. It's your friends that are not as separated as you are who are going to give you the wrong Steps to take. Go ahead. Try it. It wasn't so bad. Stick to your guns there, youth. Uh, Four of the false lights we follow. Self. Self. Proverbs 28, 26. He that trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walks wisely shall be delivered. Those that know me intimately, I'm embarrassed to say this. Rodney says, don't tell anybody. (laughs) This is one of the secrets that I have to bear, and I'm not bearing it anymore. I like to watch Hallmark movies. Rick, I just saw your face go up. (laughs) And... I often watch them repetitively. But here's what I've noticed even in, even in the G-rated movies on Hallmark. They're always saying, well, just trust your heart. What does your heart say? No! Don't trust your heart. The heart is a very fickle thing. He that, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool is a fool. But whosoever walks wisely, that's counting on the word of God, following the light of the word of God. Everybody else can do whatever they want. You and I can't. We're called to a higher, a higher 
calling to follow Christ and his word. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whosoever walks wisely, not in his own wisdom, in God's wisdom, he shall be delivered. Number three of the false lights we often follow, the scriptures say false teachers. Just, just today or yesterday, uh, they had experts on Corolla 19. That's the only way I can remember it. I know it's COVID-19. COVID-19, they had experts. These experts say one thing. These experts counter them and say, that's not right. These experts come back and say, yes, it is right. Be careful of false teachers. False teachers. Watch this verse. It's found in, it's found in 2 Timothy 4, 3. Last chapter that the Apostle Paul ever wrote down. 2 Timothy 4, 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine or sound teaching. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. When they say heap to themselves teachers, having itchy ears, when they say heap to themselves, they're looking for a teacher that will say what they want to hear. Be careful. Please be careful. You can endorse any teaching. If you go through enough teachers to find one that says what you, what you want to hear. And that's exactly what that verse is saying. Be careful of false lights. They are false teachers. And number four from Colossians 2.8. Teachings of the world. Beware lest any man spoil you through ph philosophy. That's teachings. And vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments or the teachings of the world, and not after Christ. Listen, please, and I say this again to our youth too, please be aware that there is a false teaching out there in the world that says we're too separated. We're too, and they give us all kinds of words to explain us. Who has the lowest divorce rate? Christians who learn to forgive and give mercy and serve. Who has the lowest divorce rate? Well, now they're saying marriage doesn't matter anyway. And our children are growing up in school and teachings where in a lot of cases they're seeing that. Now, praise God, there are Christian teachers who aren't saying that. There are schools that are not saying that yet. But be careful because they are after the teachings of the world and not after Christ's teachings. So that was four false lights, bad friends, self, false teachers, and then teachings of the world. In Psalms 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp, unto my feet and a light unto my path. Oh! <clears throat> I wish you could have been in some of the boots I've been in, but all you could do was see the next several steps and that was it with a flashlight and a fog bank. Oh, please, in this world is a fog bank. It's the, 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 when the clouds are right down on the ground and you can't see, when you shine your flashlight and you can't see more than five or ten feet in front of you or less than that, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It is a light unto my path. In John chapter 3, known for John three sixteen, we see this, not often read not often studied or memorized. But in John chapter 3, verse 19, this is the condemnation. He's saying this to Nicodemus, who he has just said, for God so loved the world. Now he's saying this to him. And in this condemnation, 
And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds, their actions, their sins, their lifestyles were evil. Verse 20 of that, of that part, John three twenty. For everyone that does evil hates the light. Neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. People don't want to be reproved. They don't want to be told they're wrong. They're right, you're wrong. But, no, no buts. They are right, you're wrong. It gets really bad when they say, I'm right and God's wrong. Really serious stuff there. Then in verse 21, Jesus says, John 3, 21, But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought or worked in God. Those that love the Lord want to be in the light, those that love the Lord want to use his word for their life, for their guide in life. I promise you, no one has ever regretted following Jesus and using the word of God as their, as their guide, their, their light in life. No one has ever regretted it. And I promise you, Everyone that doesn't has regretted it or will regret it. I promise. A word about darkness. If you hate darkness, you're going to really hate hell. Not just for you, though, your loved ones. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, back in our text. And I say to you, Jesus that many shall come from the east and the west, and they shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three heroes from the book of Genesis, not perfect, made mistakes. Many will come and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 12, But the children of the kingdom, who didn't go and sin no more, they might have got caught in some sin. They might have got up, confessed, and gone on, but they didn't go and sin no more. Their sin was repetitive over and over, just drawn to uh, their sin. The children of the kingdom who didn't go and sin no more shall be cast out into outer darkness. Shall be cast out into outer darkness. Darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That gnashing of teeth is biting down on your teeth so hard because of pain that you break your teeth. That's what hell was like. Don't let it get past us that there is a judgment, if not for us. There's a judgment for our loved ones and friends who maybe we have let them slide. It's not worth the battle. Here's the question. If you were that adulterous woman caught in the very act, how thankful would you be to be forgiven? Well, you are. You are that woman with a different set of sins. But you are that woman. But you you too can be forgiven. That's something we need to always remember so that we confess our sins, the sins of the day, before we go to bed, before head hits the pillow. We confess them and we go on. We too can be forgiven. Back in John eight twelve, Then spoke Jesus again, to them saying, I am the light of the world. I thought about this a lot all night. I got a bad night's sleep. How, how can I share these principles with you? Then spoke Jesus to them saying, I am 
the light of the world. In this case, Jesus is saying, I'm your guide. I volunteer to get you through. Not short term, long term, big picture. I, Jesus, want to be your life guide. They have life coaches now. He wants to be your life coach. He's given us the word of God to follow, to know. It ought to become our aim in life to know the word of God so we don't take a misstep. I know this. He's my light. He's been my guide. I've made missteps. But when I fell, I got back up again. And I went on again and tried my best not to sin again. But I know he's my light and I have no regrets about what could have been. I love the life God has given me, the wife God has given me, the ministry God has given me, the morality that God has given me. Youth, you don't have to, you don't have to make decisions on morality, they're already made. Let God be your guide. Let his word be your guide. We have three responsibilities of the sinner. One is to confess your sin before God. That's simple. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I'm so sorry about my sin. I don't want to sin. And my passions, my body, my life calls out to me to sin. Lord, I confess my sin before you. Two, repent. Don't repeat it. Go and don't do it again. That's repentance. Go and don't do it again. The Apostle Peter, after the men of Jerusalem said, what shall we do? He said, go and repent. After, after, he, he, after Peter told them, you just crucified the Christ. You just crucified the Messiah. What shall we do? Repent. Don't repeat it. Go and don't do it again. And three, receive God. Not just as your Savior, not just as your Lord. Receive God as your guide, as your light. Receive Him. Receive God in His forgiveness and follow His light. Follow His word. Follow, follow, follow. Would you leave this up on the board for just a second? And I want us to all look at that so not for us. We can, we can repeat it to others. When they say, what shall I do? Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us for not using the right light in life, for trusting so much in self. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, we pray, dear Lord, for your help in life. Be our life coach, our life guide. Lord, put it into us that we would follow you no matter what, no matter where, that you would follow Lord, protect us from harm and evil. And if there be someone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, let this morning be the morning that they would ask you to be their Lord and Savior, to be their guide, to be their guiding light. Lord, if anybody wants to do that now, I ask them to pray this prayer with me. They would say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've done bad things. 
I know that there is a penalty for being a sinner. The penalty of going to hell. But I know on the cross, Lord, you paid my penalty. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I give it to you. Come into my heart, my emotions, my feelings. I give it to you. Lord, be my Savior and be my Lord and be my light, my guiding light. In Jesus' name, amen. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, is if anyone prayed that prayer and meant it, would you raise your hand that I might see? If you just prayed that prayer, on live streaming, please contact us that we could help you to grow. Please, dear Lord, please, Lord, lead and direct these. Lord, for some of us, we've just gotten off the path. Help us, dear Lord, to get back on that path and for you to be our guide, our guiding light. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.